darlings, Mimi G here with another sew along as part of my Mimi G for Simplicity pattern collection. Today we're working on Simplicity pattern 1115. Let's get started. If you are new to sewing or just need a refresher, I suggest watching the Sewing Basics video where I talk about all of your basic tools, how to read your pattern, how to understand what size to cut, how to cut your pattern out, how to cut your fabric, read grain lines, and understand the printed information on your pattern pieces. I suggest you view that entire video and then come back and follow this video. Here are some specific tools you're going to need for this project. You're going to need a 20 to 22 inch invisible zipper. You're going to need some boning. You can buy this either in the package or by the yard. And you're going to need some interfacing. And of course, you're going to need pattern 1115. On the back of the pattern envelope, there are a list of suggested fabrics. We're gonna be working on view B, which are the shorts with the overdrape. So let's go over the pieces that you should have cut. Now you're going to need to cut out pattern piece one, two, three, and four. These are your front and back pieces. You're going to be cutting these out of fabric and also out of interfacing. As I mentioned in the Sewing Basics video, make sure that you read your pattern pieces so that you know what you're cutting on the fold and what you're not cutting on the fold. You're also going to need to cut out pattern piece number five and six out of interfacing only, not out of fabric. You're going to cut out pattern piece number 14, which is your tie belt, and this is optional. If you don't want to make the tie belt, you don't need to cut this out. You're going to need to cut out pattern piece number 11, which is the sleeve band of our overdrape. You're going to be cutting out pattern piece number 9 and 10, which are the facings for our overdrape, and you're going to be cutting these out of fabric and interfacing. For our overdrape, we're going to be cutting out pattern piece number eight and pattern piece number seven. You're only going to be cutting one of each. And for our shorts, you're going to be cutting out pattern piece number 15 and 16. Now that you have all of your pattern pieces cut out and you have all of your fabric pieces cut out, I want you to go ahead and interface the front facings of our overdrape. Now the interfacing pieces that we cut out for the front and back of our bodice are not going to be applied just yet until we start to sew it together. So just leave those interfacing set aside. Now that we've cut everything out, we can start sewing. Okay, as you can see, I have already sewn my front bodice and my front bodice lining. And the video clip you're about to see is from view A and B. So follow along, the steps are exactly the same. Once you've completed the front bodice and the front lining, front and back, then we can continue on with the uh, over bodice. Okay, we're gonna start with pattern pieces one and two of your fabric. And the center portion of the front was cut on the fold. And so you're going to take one piece of pattern piece number two and we're going to pin make sure that you pin at your notches match those notches And we're going to start sewing from the bottom up using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Take the other side and do the same thing. Pin out your notches and sew starting from the bottom. 
Now that you have both of your side fronts attached to your center front, we're going to go ahead and set this one aside and you're going to do the same exact thing with your lining pieces. Okay, we're going to grab pattern piece three and four, which is the back of our bodice, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to open up the center that was cut on the fold, and you're going to align your notches, round, uh, right sides facing, of course. I want you to pin at your notch first. You should have double notches. And we're going to sew starting from the bottom. Go ahead and do the same thing. Align your notches, pin and sew from the bottom all the way up, and then go ahead and do your lining pieces the same exact way. Now that you have sewn both uh, your bodice and your bodice lining for the front and the back, we're going to take these to the ironing table and I want you to give it a press. What you're going to do is, for your a fabric bodice, not your lining, for your fabric you're going to press it open like this. You're going to press your seams open. And then for your lining pieces, and this goes for both front and back, for your lining pieces you're going to press your seams towards the center. So both of these are going to be pointed towards the center and pressed. And on your fabric pieces you're going to open up your seam allowances and press them flat. Okay, go ahead and grab your lining pieces. These are the pieces that we pressed our seams towards the center. This should be out of lining fabric. I'm clearly using the same uh, fabric, but um, if you're using a lining fabric, you should have your seams pressed towards the front. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a casing where we're going to insert our boning. So what I want you to do is I want you to sew close to the edge, so about three-eighths of an inch away from your stitching line that you see here. And you're going to sew through all layers. that we create a casing. And you're going to do that on the other seam. and then do the same exact thing on the remaining lining pieces. Once we have our casing sewn down, what we're going to do is at the bottom of our bodice, we're going to stitch across the bottom to create a stopping point for our boning. So just using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, we're going to stitch across the bottom of our seam allowances where we created our casings. And do that to both. Okay, we're going to cut out our boning. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure the length of our casing minus that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the top and at the bottom. And you're going to cut 
and you're going to cut two for the front and then measure the back and cut two for the back. Once you have your boning cut out, go ahead and press your interfacing onto the top of our lining bodice front and back and then you can go ahead and insert your boning through the casing. And you're going to insert it into both your front casings and your back casings. Still working on our lining pieces with the front bodice wrong side facing up towards you. I want you to go ahead and pin at the side on your left side. Align your notches. and pin and then sew starting from the bottom using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance Now we're not going to sew the other side because of course we're going to be inserting uh, an invisible zipper. But it would be a good idea for you to go ahead and try this on now. So go ahead and put it over your, uh, your, bod your body. Make sure that you have a strapless bra on or whatever bra you intend on wearing with this. And then simply pin the other side uh, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance so that you can see if you need to either take it in a bit or let it out a bit before we continue. Okay, set your um, lining pieces aside after you've sewn your side seam and go ahead and grab your front bodice piece, um, not your lining, your, but your fabric. And with the right side facing you, I have the front bodice piece with the right side facing up towards me. I'm going to grab the back piece and with right sides facing, I'm going to lay them over the top of each other and instead of pinning on our left side, we're going to pin on my right side. And also starting from the bottom, sew your way up using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Give your press, give your seams a nice press. Now before we set this aside, I'm going to have you do some stay stitching. So what I want you to do is, on the back, I want you to stitch um, from the end to the middle and then from the center, from the side seam to the middle. I am probably about a half inch away from the edge of my fabric and I just want to stitch this so that it doesn't stretch when we start to sew. I'm going to stop at the center back and then starting at my side seam I'm going to stitch to meet that other stitching line. And you're going to do the same thing in the front.
Once you're done with your stay stitching, go ahead and set this aside and grab your front and back pants. Okay, go ahead and grab your front over bodice and we're going to create the pleats. You're going to create the pleats the same exact way for both the front uh, over bodice and the back over bodice. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring your pleat lines together. So grab one pleat line and bring it over. I always make little notches for the pleat legs so it's easier for me to identify. And then go ahead and pin. And then bring the next pleat line on over, fold it over. So it reaches the other notch and then pin there and then we're going to secure this by stitching across the bottom through all layers and then you're going to do the same thing to the back over bodice once we have the pleats done on the uh, bottom of our over bodice. We're going to do it on the shoulders while we have some pleat markings. So we're going to fold over those pleat lines and you're going to do the same thing for both the front and the back over bodice and we're going to stitch it down just the way we did for the other pleats. do the same thing for the other one. Okay, once you have all of the pleats done on the shoulder, um, for both the front and the back, we're going to go ahead and pin shoulder to shoulder, right sides facing. And go ahead and pin all the way down. going to pin the entire length of the shoulder and we're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance then we're going to pin the rest of our sleeve all the way down the side. Side out and take a look, press your seams. We have our shoulder and our sleeve now done. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some stay stitching along the front and back. So starting at the shoulder, we're going to stay stitch just so that this doesn't stretch when we attach our facings all the way down the front. Go ahead and serge your seams, clean up any extra threads. Okay, once you have sewn um, the entire shoulder and down the arm and then under the arm and down the side, we're going to create some gathering stitches. So what we're going to do is 
from dot to dot, unless you made a, a notch, we're going to create two rows of basting stitches from the side seam until we get to our notch on the front. And then we're going to do the same thing on the uh, back. So I'm going to back stitch at the beginning, but not at the end. And then I'm going to do that again a quarter inch away from my first line of basting stitches, of gathering stitches, I'm sorry. And you're going to do the same thing on the back. Okay, once you have your gathering stitches, your gathering rows done on the bottom of our over bodice, we're going to create gathering stitches along the sleeve. So starting at one seam, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to sew a gathering stitch all the way around, stopping 5 eighths of an inch from where you began, and then you're going to create a second row. Now set this aside and grab your facings. You're going to place them right sides together, align your notch, and you're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, using a normal length stitch. Go ahead and finger press this open. And we're going to pin it to our over bodice. You're going to pin matching your seam to your shoulder seam. And of course, right sides are facing each other. And you're going to pin that entire facing to your over bodice, matching notches. And you're going to pin it along the entire front and back. And in one continuous seam, we'll go ahead and stitch this down. Starting at the bottom, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now you can choose to finish the other edge of this by folding over a quarter inch and stitching close to the edge or with your serger. Before we turn this to the inside though, I'm going to have you do some understitching. So starting at the bottom, making sure that your seam allowances are pressed 
towards your facing and stitching only on your facing, we're going to stitch pretty close to that seam line, about an eighth of an inch away. Now I want you to go ahead and fold this to the inside and press the entire front edge of your over bodice. Okay, once you have pressed your facing to the inside, we want to secure it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just stitch along our shoulder seam right in that ditch. We're just going to make a couple of stitches so that that facing doesn't come flapping out. Securing it down and remove any threads. And now, what we're going to do is, I want you to take your sleeve binding and stitch it right sides facing, three eighths of an inch, and then you're going to press this open and then press under 3 eighths of an inch all the way around one edge, the unnotched edge. And it's going to look like this. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pull your threads, just the two top ones, and you're going to gather that sleeve. So pull and adjust your gathers. until your sleeve opening is the same as your binding. Once it looks about right, go ahead and adjust those gathers so that they're even. You're going to place your binding over the top, match your seams, and pin. Once you have it pinned in place, we're going to stitch it down using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you see any gathering stitches on the right side of your fabric, you can just pull them right out after you've sewn this on. And then on the inside of your sleeve, you can go ahead and trim this all off. Clean it up or serge it would be the easiest way. And since we have our pressed edge already folded, we're going to go ahead and turn it over and you're going to slip stitch that in place. So now that we have this mostly done, we're going to set it aside and we're going to work on our shorts. Okay, we're going to sew our pants, so you're going to place uh, your front pant leg over your back pant leg right sides facing and you're going to stitch your inseam and on the left side uh, pant leg you're going to leave an opening 
when we sew our side seam for our zipper. So for now I want you to take one back and one front, place them right sides facing and we're going to stitch our end seam I'm using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you have your inseam sewn, you can finish off your seams uh, with a serger or however you wish and press that seam open. And then on the side seam, for your right pant leg, you're going to sew all the way up your side seam, making sure that you pin at your notches. For your left pant leg, you are going to sew starting from the bottom but you're going to stop when you reach your notch. That notch is where your zipper is going to stop. Once you sew your side seam and your inseam, go ahead and press both seams open. Okay, I have finished both of my pant legs and now I'm going to, I have one right side out and one wrong side out and I'm going to put right sides facing aligning my inseams and I'm going to pin and then I'm going to continue to pin my crotch matching my notches. and then also along the back matching up my notches and we're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance pants to the right side. You want to press your crotch seam all the way around. Now starting at the notch along the waistline of your pants you're going to do two rows of gathering stitches from one notch all the way around until you reach the other notch and you're going to do that the exact same way that you did for your sleeve. Once you're done creating the two rows of gathering stitches, I want you to set this aside. And before we attach our bodice to our shorts, we want to attach our over bodice to our bodice. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab your bodice and it's the one that does not have any boning in it and does not have any interfacing on it and you're going to take the front of your bod of your over bodice and we're going to pin first at our side seams now the wrong side of your over bodice is going over the top of the right side of your bodice and we're pinning at our side seams first And then we're going to pull the gathering stitches on the over bodice, just the top ones. Until you have your over bodice placed at the notch and it fits so if you need to let out some of the gathering you can 
and then adjust your gather so that they're even. Continue pinning. And you're going to do the same thing on the back over bodice. Place the bodice, over bodice, over the dot or your notch, whichever you did. And adjust your gathers, same way as you did for the front. And then you're going to stitch this down through all layers. Go back to your regular length stitch. Once the over bodice is attached to your bodice, go ahead and remove any loose threads. And if you have any visible gathering stitches, uh, you can remove them after we attach our uh, bodice to our shorts. Just clean this up a bit. Now that our bodice and our over bodice are one piece, you can go ahead and gather the waistline of your shorts to fit onto our bodice at the waistline. So go ahead and just pull your threads and you're going to pull and adjust like just like we did for the sleeve until the waist of your shorts fits onto your bodice. And you want to make sure that you spread your gathers out evenly and once you have it the right size, you can start to pin it onto your bodice the same way that you'll see me do in the next clip that we did for view A and B. You want to make sure that you align your side seams. Go ahead and pin at your notches pin at the side seams, and then adjust your gathers to fit evenly around. Okay, we're going to go ahead and attach our bodice to our pants. So with the right uh, front of your pants facing you, so the front of the pant is facing me, I'm going to grab my bodice, the one that is not interfaced or has the boning in it, and I'm going to place it right sides facing and I'm going to start pinning at the opening. We have a side opening in our pant and then the side of our bodice is open. I'm going to pin there first and then I'm going to go ahead and align my darts and my side seams. And you're going to pin until you have the entire bodice pinned onto your pants. Make sure that your darts and your side seams all align. Once it's all pinned, we're going to go ahead and start at one side and we're going to sew until we reach the other end using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance.
how we've attached our bodice to our pant, creating our jumper. And now we're going to go ahead and insert our invisible zipper. Once you've attached your bodice to your shorts, you can just go ahead and let the overdrape fall over. You don't need to worry about it anymore. It's completely done. You don't have to fuss with it until you put it on. And you're going to continue along the same way that we did for view A and B. And then you'll see that in the next clip. You're going to insert your, insert your invisible zipper and then you're going to attach your lining to your bodice, slip stitch it, do your hem, and you'll be all finished. So continue along with the following clips. Okay, I have gone ahead and um, turned my jumpsuit wrong side out and we're going to create a basting stitch. So what I want you to do is I want you to pin at your waistline, making sure that you align that both seam allowance or both seam lines so that they are matching. And I want you to pin there first. and then pin one more time in between the top and the waistline on your bodice and we're going to sew a basting stitch which is the longest possible stitch your machine can make and we're just going to sew until we reach the existing stitching line where our where we stopped or started our stitching for our pants Make sure that the seam allowances at the waistline are up towards your bodice. Go ahead and press your seam open before we start to stitch down our zipper. Okay, we're going to pin our zipper to our seam allowance. So what I want you to do is we're only working on one um, seam allowance at a time. You're going to place your zipper so that the invisible side, the side that you don't see the teeth, is facing down and is right in the center of our seam line. And I want you to make sure that the zipper pull is above your fabric because we don't want that in the way. And we're going to pin, like I said, only on one seam allowance at a time. And pin down the zipper just so that it stays in place. And then pin across the bottom. And then starting at the top, we're just going to sew a basting stitch. We're still using a really long stitch. We're just trying to put, put this in place. Now you're going to go ahead and, working from the bottom up, do the same thing, stitching it down only to this one uh, seam allowance.
now that we have the zipper basted onto our seam allowances, we're going to remove the basting stitch that we created to, uh, for our side seam. So we're going to open that back up. And you're going to stop, of course, where our stitching is, not our basting stitches, but our first stitches. Turn your jumpsuit back out to the correct side, to the right side. And what I want you to do is I want you to pull your zipper pull all the way through to the inside because I want it completely out of the way while we're sewing this. Like that. And then starting again at the top, this time we're going to be sewing pretty close to our teeth. So what I want you to do is as you're sewing, I want you to pull your teeth open. Switch back to a normal length stitch, back stitch at the top, and you're going to be sewing, like I said, pretty close to your teeth, not onto your teeth, and you're just going to open it up just a bit as you're sewing. Same thing on the other side, except you're going to be starting from the bottom of the zipper. Back stitch. So you're going to go ahead and reach on in there, grab your zipper pull, and close your zipper. And now, as you can see, we have an, invis an invisible zipper. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open my zipper back up a bit. And we're going to sew our lining to our bodice. So what I want you to do is place and pin across the entire top of your bodice. Make sure that you align notches that right sides are facing, that your seam along or your side seams are matching, your casings are matching and continue pinning all the way across the top. Okay, now we're going to attach our um, lining to our bodice. So go ahead and open your zipper up a bit. And right now I have the front of my jumper facing me. So I'm going to take my bodice lining and I'm going to make sure that right sides are facing and that the front of my lining is aligned with the front of my bodice. And I'm going to pin at the side. 
and then I'm going to align the seam lines of my casings I'm going to pin at the side seam and then I'm going to pin across the back And then using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to stitch across the entire front and back using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, we're going to sew down all layers, including our zipper tape, pretty close to this edge here. I'm going to switch back to my zipper foot so I can get pretty close there. And you're going to stitch through all layers. And when you get to the bottom, you're going to turn up 5 eighths of an inch. You can pin that out now so you don't forget. Cut that corner and the excess zipper. Make sure you don't cut through your stitching, but you want to remove a lot of that excess. So when you turn it right side out, you have a clean finish. On both the front and the inside. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once you turn your um, lining to the inside, you're, we're going to go ahead and do a little under stitching. So we're going to be sewing on the lining portion only. So you're going to reach on in there and making sure that if you feel through, you can feel that your seam allowances should be facing down towards your um, waistline and we're going to stitch pretty close to that edge through all layers only on the face on the lining side all the way across the back and the front
gone as far as I can go, so I'm going to backstitch. And then just push this onto the inside. And I'm going to press the top edge of our bodice. Now on the inside you can go ahead and turn under the remaining seam allowance of your lining, pin it in place and then just hand stitch it closed. And I'm going to go ahead and close up my zipper and all that's left to do once you slip stitch your lining onto your um, bodice is to do the hem of our pant leg. So go ahead and try this on one more time. Make sure you like the length. If you need to take up uh, more hem than they give you as an allowance, go ahead. If you need to let it out some, if it's too short, this would be the time to make that change. I'm going to turn over an inch and a quarter all the way around my pant leg. And I'm going to stitch close to the edge all the way around. And I'm going to do this for both pant legs. That's all there is to it. I hope you've enjoyed this sew along. Until next time, peace.